I am thrilled that over the next three years, Air USA anticipates employing more than 200 additional employees at its Albuquerque location. Air USA is prepared to hire accountants, contract experts, and proposal writers. And over the next three years, the company will bring on experienced pilots, crew chiefs, weapon loaders, ammunition handlers, and life support personnel. What's more, Air USA primarily hires U.S. military veterans. And this move to New Mexico will help to secure jobs for our well-deserving veterans returning from their duties both overseas and across the United States. We're Air USA and we fly jets. What we do is exactly the same thing the U.S. military has done for decades, and that's using airborne assets for both air-to-air -air training but also air-to-ground training of the forward air controllers. What's changed over the past several years is two things. One, with the military cutbacks, we can, we can operate our aircraft uh, for significantly less than, than the U.S. would be using in comparable aircraft such as an F-16 or an F-18, which is a $40 million asset, to basically train a guy that's you know, calling in an airstrike where we can accomplish the same thing for much less money cost per hour. That's the first part of the equation. And the second part of the equation is with, all, with the multiple wars, they, we've, the U.S. military has put a lot more hours on their assets than they ever were anticipated. So therefore, in essence, a lot of the, a lot of the fleet's getting used up, both the U.S. Air Force and the Navy aircraft. So, so their life expectancy has gotten shorter, and the new F-35 and so forth that are coming online, basically there won't be enough assets to be able to keep the, air, keep the fleet really staffed correctly to be able to provide all the training, and that's where we come in. We, we bring former Soviet aircraft, we're putting hours on those aircraft, we're saving the U.S. military aircraft for real, true combat scenarios, what they're intended for, and that way we're not basically wearing out the U.S. fleet. So we do it more cost effectively, first of all, and we're also saving the fleet secondly. The other reason for us coming here, other than the geographic location and the ranges and so forth, quite honestly, we knew that we we're going to move somewhere in one of the southwestern states, one of probably eight to ten states, and it was primarily because of the tax incentives, the job training incentives, and these, these incentives that we looked at and said this was a clear choice. So that's what brought us here, and uh, we're looking forward to having this as a, a very long-term home. All of our personnel are all military people. A lot of retirees, some people just got out, and they're all veterans. All of our pilots have at least about 33,000 hours of combat-type flying. Nearly all of our pilots have been, been in combat, uh, numerous missions. 250 missions for me, others a lot of, lot of experience. So all of our pilots that way, all of our mechanics are come right off the line for us. And in addition to that, as I summarize, we do all of that, those are our primary customers, but we also have contracts with civilian contractors, Boeing, Raytheon, BAE Corporation, Northrop Grumman, and we do a lot of R&D research and development with all of those companies. That's kind of how this evolved actually over about the last 11 years and from our perspective we believe our business is just starting to explode. Punisher 1, um, tug the uh, vehicle, 1-1-1, clear out.